Welcome back. Well, as you know, last week saw the death of one of the most flamboyant and popular figures in uh, rock music, Freddie Mercury, lead singer with Queen. He led the group to international success, thrilled fans as well with his exciting stage performances. Joining us in the studio now to pay tribute and maybe to reflect on Freddie's memory for the first time are two of the band members, guitarist Brian May and drummer Roger Taylor. Thanks for coming and we do appreciate you coming. Thanks, Mike. If we can just ask, just to ask a couple of questions first, how long did Freddie know that he was suffering from AIDS, full-blown AIDS? I think that's a question we can answer mm. because we don't actually know ourselves. It was always a very private thing with him. Mm. Um, we knew for a, a you know, a, I guess we knew intuitively something was going on, but it wasn't talked about. He didn't officially tell us until just a, a few months before he went. Mm. But certainly he knew for five years or so or more, so he was living under the shadow for a very, very long time. He was time. living under the shadow. And what did it yeah. do, as far as you could see it and tell? Because in many ways he's a very private man, that's the irony of it, isn't it? But as far as yes. you could see, what, what did it do to him, the, the knowledge that he was... Well, the one thing he wanted to do was keep on working in, in the studio. Um, he was absolutely uh, uh, determined to keep on keep the group the group going and yeah. to keep working, and that that actually mm -hmm. kept him going. You see, uh, we for watched a long earlier. Time. We watched earlier. Those are the days of our lives, and actually yeah. watching it was unbearably poignant just to watch it. So for you fellows to be in that, it must have been a difficult session emotionally. It's incredibly difficult. Yes, session. it 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 was hard. It was really, but we mm. were sort of trying to support him through it. Mm. And, uh, and he was incredibly brave at, at, at that uh, mm. time. Ob obviously, he knew, you know, and, and we all knew uh, at, at that time. Uh, and, uh, mm. But, you know, the, the best thing is just to get on with life mm. uh, and to do it. And, and he did that. And I, th I think he, he carried on very bravely, actually. Mm. Now, one of the principal reasons you're here, and we're grateful for you coming in, the commentators have all had their say, haven't they? All, everybody's become instant experts on the life and past of... Uh, Freddie Mercury, be they in the papers or be they on television, the content. Where did they go wrong and where did they go right in their assessments? You first. Uh. Well, I mean, uh, it's been quite distressing to read some of the, um, the, the reports in the press. Uh, one thing is that the, obviously they, nobody really knew him, but a lot of people sort of made out that they did. Um, also the fact that, I mean, he was a very private guy, um, but they got nearly all their facts wrong and that they missed out the point of, of what he was actually like in private, which was actually a very shy, gentle, mm. kind person. He wasn't the kind of persona that he put over on stage because, you know, he was an entertainer. And it, and it mm. makes his friends, I know the people who, who looked after him right mm. to the end, I mean, they all get very angry when, when they see the way that he's represented mm. in the English press, especially the tabloid press. Yes, I mean, we, we, it would be wrong of us not to say that, that he has been depicted in certain quarters as a sort of decadent, wild, bisexual, mm. irresponsible lover. Yes, so yeah. how, uh, what was actually the truth of that? Yes, that's very, that definitely makes us very angry because he was, certainly the Freddie we knew, wasn't wildly promiscuous. He wasn't consumed by drugs, any of these things that people are saying. He was, he had a very responsible attitude to everyone that he was close to and he was a very generous and caring person to all the people that came through his life. And more than that, you can't ask really, you know, he, as he moved from from a relationship to another one, he was always very, as I say, um, you know, aware of, of the effect he was having on people's lives. It's, is it a peculiarity that maybe his private nature contributed to some of the lurid epitaphs? In other words, the, the reality was uh, mm. big showman on stage, but immensely private off stage. Is that mm. correct? That's right. Nobody really got inside the shell. And so lots of mm. the, the tabloids, I mean, it's just incredible. I read something in the mirror last week, which was uh, written by some poor old sick devil. Um, it's just so wrong. So they obviously made things up because they probably couldn't get inside. And for the last 18 months of his life, he was hounded by press outside his house. And we all have been up to a point. It's quite incredible in this country. But he really was a prisoner in his own house for the last 18 months of his life. Were there times years ago, because I mean you're familiar visitors here, both of you, when you'd liked him to have been more upfront and him to have answered interviews and maybe handled the press more? Would that have helped, do you think? Um, not necessarily. I, I think we didn't always agree, and there were times when we talked about it, but mm. Freddie was very much his own man. He made a decision very early on in his life that he was going to do things his way. And um, certainly we respected that. We all have our own ways, but within the, the group, you know, we respected that he was going to handle his own life, and certainly his own 
attitude to what he was suffering towards the end was his own business, you know. So in some senses we were gagged by that, which was hard for us, you know. You find yourself even not being able to talk about it to friends. Now that's kind of lifted, we can be very, very open about how we feel. It's interesting hearing you talking because, uh, Roger, you particular, particularly give the impression that none of you really knew him. He was, wasn't one of those people you really knew. I think, I mean, we were very, we were very close as a group, mm. I mean, mm -hmm. always, for 22 years, I, th I think. But it's, even we didn't really know, know a lot of things about Freddie, because he was quite a mystery. Mm -hmm. I tell you, we, we do feel absolutely bound to stick up for him, because he can't stick up for himself anymore, mm. so, you know. That's right, there's, there's no curb on people being able to say things about people once they've died. So there's very little yeah. curb on what they can do when they're alive in this country. And I think one of the things, a lot of people said, what can we do for Freddie? And I think one of the things would be to try and get these laws changed and, and make sure that people don't have to put up with, you know, perhaps, you know, if we could ensure that there's some kind of lobby to, uh, to bring in these um, protection of, of, of your private thoughts, Bill, you know, I forget what the, the it's proper It's interesting that state facts can be protected mm. for um, periods of up to 25 to 50 years, mm -hmm. yeah. and yet as soon as somebody's buried, Mm. It's an open season. That's right. And there's no law to stop people disclosing parts of people's private lives when they're alive anyway. I mean, in France there mm. is. You cannot publish details of, um, of, of somebody's private things without their consent. You come on because you're angry, basically. Not because you wanted to get up early and appear on breakfast television. You come on because you're angry, yeah? Um, that, that's the main fuel, yeah? because we're angry. We, we also just... want to explain, really, what, what we feel that we can do now mm. with sort of Freddie's legacy in a way, you know. Mm. We, we, and also, I think, that's right, there's a lot to say, really, because Freddie made one crucial decision before he died, which was to announce the fact that he did have AIDS, yeah. which was a very brave and I think well-timed act on his part, because it gave us and those close to us a, a kind of weapon um, to talk about AIDS. You know, it would have been very easy for him to put on his death certificate pneumonia, you know, which he knew, and it could have perhaps sidestepped the whole thing. The fact that he announced it and said, look, I've got this, and... and and he was, there was no shame to that. I think it's very important because there shouldn't be from this point, or not from any point, any stigma to having this disease. It's nothing to do with, you know, somebody did something wrong, he's being punished. That's got to go. It has to go, you know. It's yeah. everybody's problem now. We're going to talk much more uh, later, fellas. I, I just mm. love one theory about what created that magnificent showman. Any, where did, was it the Persian background? Do you have any theories on... Uh, it's so difficult because he was so much <laughs> his own creation. Uh, yeah. Uh, he really was his own man in, in that sense. Uh, I, I really don't know. I mean, uh, he, he's it's like sporting or, or musical genius art that you wish you could yeah. distill it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right, yeah. It was yeah. a one off. Yeah. Yes. Listen, fellas, we'll be chatting much more later, but for the moment, thank, thank you very you. much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Roger Taylor and Brian Mayer with us. It would be pathetic if the death of Freddie Mercury was left as the death of Freddie Mercury, a few lurid epitaphs be they on television, be they in newspapers, be they on some other form of film. Got to be something more to that, to it, than that. What, what do you think it is? There's a lot more, I think. There's a lot more to say. I mean, it's quite amazing still watching that video because he, and, and from the amount of love that's poured in the last few days from all over the world, I mean, his life definitely changed the world. And I think his death is already changing the world as well because it's, um, first of all, we're putting out this record of it, which is, um, a memorial to him, re-releasing the Bohemian Rhapsody thing, and all the proceeds will go to the AIDS charity, Charity yes. Higgins Trust. It's, it's in fact a, a double A side, and the other side uh, is uh, a track called Days of Our Lives, which I, you showed earlier. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, and they are actually the first and the last videos we made. Oh, yes. So, and the words sort of tie in quite well as well. So as you talk about the song titles, can I just ask you, the show must go on. Mm. Uh, I mean, you cannot get a more poignant title that. Was that actually deliberate? Was there's, there a a lot, there's a lot of oh. things in a lot of the songs. If mm. you look back now, which you'll you'll find sort of bear some sort of um, right. have some sort of bearing on what was going on. Yes, the songs generally aren't about one thing. There's usually different levels in a lot of the songs. You, you made a claim just then, and people will ring in. I mean, such mm. is the nature of people. They'll say, "What do you mean he changed the world?" What well, you know, that's an extravagant claim to make. How I think uh, how would you defend that? What, well, what do you I mean? think I mean. He, uh, I think one of the results of his life can be that, that people have a different attitude to people being gay. I really hope so, you know, and it's in a way been quite hard for us to talk about it because it was very much his business while it was going on. But he is a guy who was strong, who was incredibly talented, mm. quite magnificent in, in every way you can think of, and he was gay and was quite public about it. So I don't think anyone can ever quite 
feel the same about that anymore. I mean, and it's time, God knows, you know. But uh, it shocks me that you still read in the paper, I mean, yesterday there was something so-and-so admitted he was gay. Mm -hmm. Now, anybody who writes admitted is guilty of a slur, you know, and there's no reason on earth why, why anyone should be allowed to get away with that now. Mm -hmm. So I, we certainly feel able Absolutely. to sort of throw ourselves behind that now, you know, mm -hmm. so it's going to be... Um, heteros for gay or whatever it is, you know. Because you I don't know what he's with you as well. You, th you think, as, as a band, everybody who is connected with him, that at least this is the chance for something positive to come yeah, out so of it. So much positive can he come can, out You of can it, do yeah. so much. That's exactly yeah. what Freddie wanted, mm -hmm. in, in his, especially in his last um, sort of period. Mm -hmm. He felt that by making the announcement, he could turn something positive, you know, mm -hmm. out of this sort of awful thing that's right. was happening. And, and uh, we intend to to carry that through and we're mm. thinking of doing something next year, some kind of event, mm. uh, you know, probably in his name, that will, will be something positive and will raise a lot of money, we hope. Because mm. it's almost inconceivable, really, thinking of Queen performing without him as the yeah. lead vocalist. Well, yes, it, it's it is pretty inconceivable, actually. Yeah. 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 So, what, will, what will happen to you? We haven't really decided. We haven't really, I mean, we've been quite knocked over by it, as you can imagine, and we haven't really got over the first stages of of grieving, I don't think yet. No. Really. And we haven't, we've decided we would shelve all this business of what would, what do we do. Mm -hmm. First of all, we deal with the situation as it is. Absolutely. And Freddie has given us such a magnificent um, kind of platform. I mean, we, we can certainly make money for the AIDS business, you know, with no problem at all. You and we can also them. raise awareness of it, which is definitely happening already. I know you were saying to me about the record company, everyone has foregone a profit on this. Yes, yeah, all my, the money goes. My, um, yeah. uh, donating all of their side as well, so every penny is uh, going towards the uh, Terence Higgins uh, Trust. Um, Did you ever get a chance to discuss with him at all that you might do this sort of thing? afterwards or was it was it something it that was, was perhaps quietly accepted? It was quietly accepted I think really you know we, we really tried to keep him company and just you know um, ease his sort of later period you know. As Paul Daniels is, is listening here were you a, a fan of Queen and of Freddie Mercury? Well no because I, I wasn't a fan of, of any music I just did put my head down, I should imagine like you did into music, I put my head down into magic and this, all this music business sort of went on at a different level. Uh, I'm not the fan, I just like music. Uh, but what we can talk about, and it's difficult for you to sit here in this discussion, I know that, but no, what, what we not. are talking I find this really interesting because, because I only see the public the publicity side of it. Mm. You know, I am the public when it comes mm. to the, the music industry. And the Freddie Mercury bit, um, as I was discussing to a gentleman outside from EMI, I think, yeah, mm. he, uh, I said that he will defeat the press, ultimately, mm. that do the bad reporting. Mm. It, it will, it, that will be gone by next week or so. And then some psychic will get in touch with uh, Freddie Mercury and all that rubbish well, will start that again. Nonsense, yeah. mm. And you get that nonsense. But, be, but you cannot defeat the quality of that video. Nor his fans. I mean, that's the thing. And nor his fans, who hopefully would stop buying the newspapers that printed the rubbish. But where, where I thought, you know, that we can all think about what makes somebody who's different artistically. I mean, we've discussed yeah. the homosexuality, we've discussed it, but I'm still fascinated by where Freddie Mercury came from, because mm -hmm. as we're saying, he's a one-off artist. Nobody knows. Nobody yeah, knows. but I don't, think, I, don't think that, I don't think you can say, well, that was created because he was a homosexual. Well, I think that was just Freddie. That. No, I think that's just Freddie Mercury, mm -hmm. who had an awareness of who he was, where he was at, um, and he created his his own image, as these guys said earlier in the morning. You know, he was his own man, and he knew where he wanted to go. Yes, he had a tremendous force of personality, and mm. uh, it, which left a tremendous mark on everybody around him, you know, especially yeah. us, obviously. Mm -hmm. You were talking about the difference as well between him on stage and at home. That is an interesting part of people who are very often in the public eye and in the music business, isn't it? That you can be a great showman when you're out there, so live when you're on stage at one level, and then walk away from it entirely. It's a healthy balance to keep, I yes. think. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a good yeah. stage, as Paul would agree, it's a good place to be someone else and work off all the things yeah. that you need to do. Yeah. And you can go away and be private. I would say it, I think he's a bit like Michael Jackson. Showman, mm -hmm. perfectionist yeah. Yeah. and private. That's right. Yes, yeah. very private. And, and I'm a perfectionist mm -hmm. as well. And yes, very dedicated. And you've got to be that. Mm -hmm. if, you're not that you're, you're, if you're not that, you're, you're, you're nothing. You're, you're just another one. Mm -hmm. um, I know when you're talking about being 
off the stage you're normal. Mm. I always used to say, well, if I was any different, my mother would slap my legs. <laughs> and and, and, and it's, you've got to have that. You've got to have that common sense balance that says, hey, I'm just a guy. Mm. Yeah. I can do tricks. Freddie could sing. But the sad thing can play like you wouldn't was that he didn't have one single person in his life who, who made him very, very happy. Well, that hasn't really been reported, you know. I mean, mm. he, didn't, he didn't, in fact, die alone. He died with a very stable and loving relationship, which the people don't see fit to report, you know. They still harp on about... I mean, the only thing which yeah, is kind of regarded as legitimate... He wasn't miserable. That's right. Know, I mean, which he's, has been... Yeah, his, so it's it's all crap. I mean, this, the proper story has to be told somehow, you know. Right. But, you know, the papers were full of various things which seem scarcely relevant, you know, about the funeral and everything. But nobody said there were actually... In fact, three guys who were very caring, who were with him to the end. You know, nobody mentions that yeah. sort of stuff. And that would be a great comfort one in to fans <laughs> who know that he that he did have That's that right, sort a of totally care. stable relationship. Yes, yeah. yes. I mean, this is contrary to what everybody knows. You know, and it's not for us. To, I mean, it's still a private matter. You know, it's not for us to go on about that. Absolutely. But just it's nice for people to know, perhaps that that don't believe any of it, folks. You know. Yeah, it's really not true. It's <laughs> also it is true. we found it's very irresponsible of some of the newspapers to to call AIDS a fashionable disease because it's, it's not fashionable. It's, oh, really? it's terrible. It's not fashionable. Mm -hmm. it's Can withered. we talk a little more about AIDS? I, I think, because I think, I know that people at last have been saying this, but let's say it also, you know, this is not something which is, is just affecting people who are promiscuous or people that are gay or people that are this or that, drug users. It's everywhere now, you know, and it's totally irresponsible to suggest that we're kind of safe because if we're none of these things, you know, our children are going to be incredibly at risk. At the moment, women are incredibly at risk because it's so easily transmittable heterosexually to women. So we've got to be incredibly careful from this moment, you know, and anyone who suggests that it's, that it's uh, someplace else and we're still okay, folks, is, is committing a terrible crime against Absolutely. the rest of Absolutely. us. Absolutely, and that in a way should be the verbal epitaph, shouldn't it, to um, mm -hmm. Freddie Mercury. Listen, Brian Roger, we do appreciate you coming in. Thanks talking and putting at least some of the records Thank you. straight. We, we, we hope <laughs> there's you a lot more to come. I know there's a lot more. Maybe you'll <laughs> yeah. come in again if you can bear another early morning start. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Eight early morning start. Yeah. Paul, as ever, a welcome guest. Thank you very much. And can I equally say that I'm not giving any of the royal family magic lessons which I read in the paper this week. Thank you. <laughs> Oh. Right. So setting the but now they've seen that, they might demand it. So maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and good luck with the video, Paul Daniels' magic show. The very the uh, highlights of highlights, yes, many highlights. years. Yeah. Thanks for joining us.